so this is supplying only a half a volt, but it's going at at least 100 and 120 milliamps. So it's supplying quite a bit of power, but only at low voltages. So I can't run any large motors because most motors require a higher voltage than that, but these little motors will run on it. It seems to easily be able to handle both of these motors at once. The um, current draw doubles. It was warm earlier, but it's actually cold now. It was warm when I first made it. So that's interesting. I'm drawing 49 milliamps right now. The current draw, strangely, is climbing slowly. It started out at about 47.9, and then it went to 48. Now it's at 49, trying to go to 50. Um, that's very interesting. Okay, I found a motor with a lower impedance. This one is drawing 35, almost 36 milliamps at a half a volt, or at 0.6 volts, and so it's spinning much faster. Basically, the lower resistance on the inside means that it can draw more current at the same voltage. So, therefore, it spins faster. Very interesting. So I've, um, I put the lower impedance motor here and I've got it running. It's running quite fast. Um, it's running for about 10 minutes now and I've gone ahead and I've sealed up the battery. I've used some hot glue. Um, you can't see it too well here, but I put hot glue around where the copper comes out and hot glue around the inside. Um, so yeah, so it's sealed up, so nothing should be able to escape. I put it on this coffee paper so I can see if it forces a leak, if the pressure builds up or something, or if any any um, of the electrolyte gets out. And I'm just going to see how long it runs. I'm going to leave it here all day and uh, see how long it runs, right? It's drawing about 30, 30 milliamps, 35 um, from this motor at about uh, 0.61 volts. And uh, see what happens. Okay, we started at 1 o'clock on the dot. Uh, one o'clock on the mark, and uh, now it's 4.30, and we're still running, going a little bit slower. Um, I think what I'm going to do is get my voltmeter and check and see what the voltage is. Now we're getting 0.34 volts. 0.35 volts. Um, so it's dropped about half of its voltage, close to half. Um, so let's short it out and uh, see what the current is like. See now it's maxing out at about 60 milliamps. So yeah it's dropped quite a bit. It hasn't leaked at all. This is still completely dry. So I can't tell if the aluminum is corroding or if that's just the carbon sticking to it. But, uh, either that carbon is sticking there and making it look like there's a bunch of holes in it or the aluminum is corroding away. So uh, I might open that up later and see exactly what the shape of both those pieces of metal are. So it's a bit past seven and it finally quit working. And when it did, it uh, started to leak a bit on the top. So there is pressure buildup. Oh, it's working again. Interesting. But if you can see that little bit of bubble on the top, and a um, little bit of leakage. So there's definitely a little bit of pressure inside. So that's interesting. So there's gases being produced on the inside and it just quit again. Sometimes if I bang it, yeah, sometimes if I bang it, it'll start up again, which I find also is interesting. And also if I, um, if I move it around, if I shake it or if I just tilt it, sometimes that's enough to get it going. And you probably definitely can't hear this. All you can hear is my dog panting in the background, but it's actually making a, a very quiet crackling sound as the um, water escapes, or the rather salt water escapes from the container. I'm about to hook this up to some sort of a battery or a power supply and um, see if what happens when I put current into it as opposed to taking current out and see if it will um, charge.